What is up everybody? I'm No Lux Given here with your afternoon snap and today I wanted to showcase this deck's plan B. What happens when you don't get the perfect draw of wave into Galactus into Null, but I guess before we do that, let's look at the plan A first one more time. This was a really, really strong game. Basically the perfect curve here, and actually the perfect curve once we draw magic, because now we can go turn three wave, turn four Galactus, turn five magic, turn six Null, and then my opponent will probably retreat at that point, but if not, we can play a turn seven Mystique just to copy that Null as well. So a ton of power potential we're looking at this game. Nova Roma is going to be our third location, and these locations don't really impede with us too terribly, so we are gonna be free to do whatever it is that we want. And we even draw Cosmo, which gives us a lot of possibilities here too in terms of being able to protect what we got going on. So I'll probably throw that one in the mix as well. And then here we go, turn four Galactus Destroyer of Worlds. My opponent actually did have a chance here. If they Magnetoed into Kalintar, then that would have moved over the wave and canceled out our Galactus. But luckily, we are going to get to destroy those other two locations, and that's going to make Null pretty dang big here 16 power already and like i said we can also copy that with mystique if we really want to in the later stages of the game so that seems pretty sweet i'm instead going to pump up Noel with yandu and protect it with cosmo i think this is just a little bit of a safer play plays around things like leader shang chi we just won't have to worry about any of those things we got Cosmo protection here now, and Yandu adds a little bit more power to the board even so, uh, just as a two power card, but also because it's going to destroy the Incredible Hulk. So pretty lucky roll with that one, and then Cosmo will put an end to any of the fancy stuff my opponent is trying to do otherwise. And my opponent actually will stay in this one. They've got a pretty sweet final turn, but we're dropping 28 power to the board. So that is gonna be really, really tough for my opponent to beat here. And let's see what they can do. Lockjaw plus Wasp, this goes and fetches Infinite for 20 power, and then Mbaku's gonna come out, and that drags Jubilee for only one power. But a really, really close game. Mbaku's trying to get back in there. He can't, there's no space on the board. But yeah, just a really fun one that I wanted to kick this video off with. And I also wanted to show that game because it was pretty close. My opponent almost disrupted us with Magneto and totally threw our Galactus plans out the window, which is why it's important to have a backup plan for this deck something to do if your opponent either disrupts you or you just straight up don't draw Galactus. So we're going to take a look at a few games where we use the deck's backup plan now. And in this one, we are going to draw Galactus. We've got Olympia. So we draw two extra cards and we grab the wave and the Galactus pretty early on. And on turn two, we draw death. So I'm feeling pretty good about this curve now overall. I'm gonna go ahead and snap on turn two. I like our chances from here. I should mention that I played Yandu in location number three. That way we keep Olympia open and that's just one potential place for us to play Galactus later on. Uh, if those early revealed locations are neutral locations that we can play Galactus into, I tend to like to keep those open and favor playing cards in the unknown locations with this deck. On turn three, we're gonna drop that wave to meet my opponent's lizard there, and that will allow us to play the G-Man on turn four. And I'm feeling pretty good about what we're able to do here, though I will say thanks to Olympia, I think my opponent had the opportunity to draw a few more disruptive elements themselves and some proactive elements as well. So they're gonna go ahead and snap on turn three. And they've got some nice stuff coming. I might have to jump ahead here a little bit, but they're gonna play Lockjaw and the Wasp, and the Wasp is going to fetch an arrow, which moves our wave over, which doesn't seem like much, and it's actually kind of a nice thing, because now I don't have to worry about arrow this turn, but it does mean that I have to play Galactus into Olympia. I just don't have any other open locations for it, which, credit to my opponent, they realize this as well, and that's going to allow them to really disrupt me here 
and again I might need to jump ahead a little bit, they're gonna hit us with a green goblin into Olympia. So again, this counters Galactus. Galactus isn't going to activate and we gotta go to the backup plan. But because of Olympia, like I said, I think we might still have the tools to take this game. We're gonna play magic on this turn and then basically next turn we have to draw Null. But if we do, then there's still a chance that we can figure a way out of this. So we are not out of it yet. That's why I've had some people in the comments ask like, why do you play Magic and Mystique? Uh, those cards don't seem like they're very good in the deck, but this is why for the backup plan right here. Uh, so my opponent's going to play a Jubilee and that is gonna go ahead and grab them America Chavez. And then we'll play Magic, we'll flip over Washington DC. Important to note, I'm leaving Monster Metropolis there because I want Arrow to still have nine or more power. I wanted that to have, wanted that to have the plus three. That'll just give us a few more options. And then on turn six, we're gonna drop Null. Turn seven, we're gonna play Mystique, copying our Null. And then we're gonna play Shang-Chi and try to blow up some of my opponent's bigger cards here. And I will note, my opponent didn't play anything this turn, so that means that we are potentially looking at an Infinaut play. So we gotta figure out where that Infinaut's gonna go, and honestly, it could go either in Limbo or in Olympia. It's probably a little bit more likely to go into Limbo, uh, but I figured playing Shang-Chi, playing Mystique, playing Null at all three different locations kind of spreads me out here. And we do see the Infinite, but we also see a She-Hulk come out. So now our Mystique is gonna copy Null and then Shang-Chi is gonna flip over, destroy 19 power worth of cards, which is a 19 times three point swing. What is that? Uh, 57, a 57 point swing in the final turn, destroying 19 and then giving us 28. So pretty fantastic stuff there. And we don't beat the Infinite, but that is still enough to take my opponent for eight cubes. So I think that's a pretty good backup plan and it's even a little bit more flexible than you might initially realize. You don't actually need magic. This deck also plays a bunch of energy ramp cards and you can use those to play out Null and then follow that up with a Mystique later on. So that's what we're gonna look at in this one. Assuming we don't draw Galactus, we've got turn three Wave, turn four Null, turn five Mystique, and for turn six, we just have to draw Shang-Chi. But if we can do that, that should be really sweet and a whole bunch of power, especially because our third location is Sinister London. So we're setting up to do some really, really big stuff this game. And I'm gonna go ahead and wave on turn three. My opponent played a Mysterio on turn two. And then on turn three, they are going to follow this up with a Cyclops. Uh, so we're looking at a Patriot deck here. And now there's actually one other thing that might be a little bit of concern because we draw the Shang-Chi. So I am gonna go ahead and snap. I'm gonna throw down that Null and snap, uh, playing that into Sinister London. So potentially this game could get pretty crazy, though my opponent does have to make their cards Shang-Chi-able. So we're counting on them basically to play a Patriot into Sinister London so that way we can blow up some cards with Shang-Chi later on in uh, the final turns, but I'm feeling confident enough here. And my opponent's going to play a Sarah into Sinister London. So their cards cost two less, but they're also kind of running out of some space here. And uh, we'll drop that Null into Sinister London. One thing that I did want to mention that's cool with this Null Mystique game plan is that your opponent is always going to keep priority. They're always going to have more power than you. You're really not adding much power to the board, which means that Shang-Chi will always be the last card flipped up in the game, which is pretty cool because that means that you'll have uh, a lot of opportunity to destroy some stuff. Does mean your opponent could potentially play around it with Cosmo, though my opponent plays right into it here. They play double Patriot plus Mystique, so Cyclops is going to go up to 10 and then 9 in the sewer system, and they re do reveal a Cosmo as well, but that's in Lemuria. We don't even have any Shang-Chi targets over there, so... We're doing pretty good. This should be a pretty sweet one. Not only do we get to Shang-Chi in both Sinister London and the sewer system, but we can actually guarantee it by dropping Yandu and the cloak over into Lemuria and filling that location. So we're gonna go from having one, negative two, and four power 
to completely destroying all of my opponent's power. We're hitting, uh, Shang-Chi's hitting for 19 again, though this time we've got four nulls out on the battlefield. So this is going to be a crazy point swing. We take out both of their Cyclops. We don't take out their Misty Knight. That one's a little bit too small, but we are still going to have an insane amount of power here on the final turn. And props to my opponent. They were a pretty good sport here. They gave me the thumbs up after seeing just how sweet that was. Um, we'll, we'll skip ahead to that. Yeah, they gave me the uh, thumbs up phrase there. And my next opponent, also a pretty good sport. It's basically the same game. So I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. Um, this time we get out Null, and I said that the deck has tons of different kinds of ramp. This time we get out Null with Silox plus Elysium as uh, helping us. And we also have Sinister London again in this game. But this time my opponent is playing a deck with Moon Girl and Devil Dinosaur. So they are going to make a bunch of dinos but they don't even realize what is in store for them here. And I'm actually gonna blow things up on this turn right now, just so that way we can play around Cosmo. And then on my final turn, we'll have priority and all play Cosmo into those last two lanes. But in this way, we're only going for one cube. I should have snapped right here, um, but we're gonna be able to blow up a ton of dinosaurs here and uh, grab a really big victory. And we'll say that I didn't snap because I wanted to make sure we could add this one to the highlight reel. And Adizi, uh, I said, speaking of good sports, reached out to me afterwards because they were like, wow, that was so incredibly sweet. Um, I, that was an awesome game. And I said, I got it coming for you here on YouTube. So wanted to include that one for you here. But for today, that is going to be it. Hopefully I showcased the versatility of this deck and how it can be... Um, just just uh, have some nice backup plans for it. And there's other cards in this deck that I'm gonna talk about, I think, over the next few days. I've got a few different videos lined up all on kind of different topics like this. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. I got plenty more coming with Galactus and Noel, but for today, that's gonna be it for me. So thank you very much for watching. I'm Noel Lux Given. Peace.